unfortunately George Rizan died at the age of 69 on Saturday here in St. George's. Uh, joining me now is uh, Mr. Aaron Moses. Uh, good morning, how are you doing? I'm good. Very good. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, thank First you. time on your program. Well, we have pleasure having you here. Um, we, we got online and uh, did a little search for George Brazan and um, the, the number of uh, broadcasting companies or news companies that have uh, have a little article on George Brazan is quite uh, impressive. Uh, I've pulled up a few of them. Um, a lot of the American uh, companies and newspapers uh, from you know, the Washington Post to ABC News, NBC News, uh, all have um, a story remembering George Brazan. Um, so you can see there the Washington Post. I know that the text uh, might be a little hard to read, um, but George Brazan, who led Grenada for four months as Prime Minister, dies at 69. Uh, we have had Boston Globe, uh, George Brazan, 69, former Prime Minister of Grenada, uh, CBS, um, I'll say in fairly similar things, of course, uh, GrenadaBroadcast.com. Uh, they have um, former Grenada Prime Minister George Bazan has died at the age of 69. Uh, long admired as a patriot, educator, and historian, Bazan passed away at the General Hospital in St. George's following a lengthy battle with diabetes. Um, ABC, similar story. And then uh, Canon News. Canon News is a really long article about George Brazan, the politician, historian, and educator. Um, and a lot of information there about uh, the man and, and some of the things that he did. And I just want to read a couple of quotes um, from this one. Uh, let me see if I find it here. It says, uh, died at the General Hospital in St. George's less than two weeks after the island celebrated its 38th independence anniversary. Uh, issuing a statement from Canada where he was celebrating independence with nationals abroad, Prime Minister Thomas said of Brazan, I remember him as a friend and a statesman, a man committed to his family. Although afflicted by sickness, he, is still, fu he still found opportunities to contribute to discussions on national development. Uh, he continued, Grenada has lost a great stalwart who gave selflessly as a teacher, author, politician, historian, minister of government, and prime minister. Brazan was, Thomas said, a patriotic Grenadian whose love for country was exceptional, a man who was passionate about his country. Uh, so a lot of really kind words about uh, George Brazan there. Uh, and then, of course, on our Facebook page, we asked you to uh, send in your condolences, which some of you have. Uh, so I'm just going to read a few of those out. Uh, Patricia Sylvester, my condolences to Mr. George Rizan. May you abide with the angels. Uh, Ren Ren King, uh, rest in peace, Mr. George Rizan. You will always be remembered. Uh, Richard McPhail, my deep commiseration to the family and relatives of the Honorable George Rizan. He served the state remarkably well. May he rest in peace. So, um, anyway, continue sending in those condolences. Uh, we'll try and read some more out later on in the show. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Moses, uh, somebody who uh, knew Mr. Brazan, uh, you know, where were you when you heard the news? What was your reaction? Well, I, I was at the uh, Grenada Athletic Association really meeting at Queen's Park when uh, the news was conveyed to me. Um, it was not totally unexpected given his recent battles, um, but however, any demise of an individual who has been so powerful, who has made such a significant and meaningful <coughs> contribution to the growth and development of, of Grenada, uh, the sense of loss is always um, painful mm -hmm. and, and shocking. In some respects, um, for me, it, I think his demise was too early because I still think that he had a tremendous amount to offer in terms of mentoring. I suspect he would I would still like to, to do a few more history books, particularly of our recent history. And for someone who I regarded as a possibly my, well, he was definitely my most important mentor in life. Uh, 
There are a number of teachers who obviously contribute to all of us um, early development and formative years, but I think Mr. Brizan has been possibly the most influential person in terms of shaping and molding my vision of a professional life. Uh, I first encountered him in 1972 when I started sixth form. So he was my economics teacher for during that period. And during that period, it was a very restive period uh, in the Caribbean and indeed the world. We had a rise in, in black consciousness. We had the black power movement. A number of uh, forces coalesced to make that period very challenging for young people. We had a number of countries, intellectuals, political leaders throughout the Caribbean attempting to break the shackles of colonialism, attempting to uh, pursue new paths of development. And we found ourselves as young students facing a group of young, exciting teachers who just returned from university and who were willing and exciting to impart their knowledge. And George Brizan was one such person. His energy, his passion, his engaging ways in which he taught, he, he brought to me economics alive. It was no longer abstract theories, but um, the way he taught his penchant for socioeconomic research, his utilization of real life scenarios. I could well remember him, for instance, um, teaching the theory of pricing and using local examples because he did a lot of research. Uh, he was quite uh, supportive of the trade union movement. He did tremendous work for them. He did a lot of research in agriculture, so he built an extremely close relationship with the farmers. And he shared all those um, bits of information um, and made his class come to life. <coughs> it also extended beyond the classroom. Um, we spent a lot of time together. He would invite us over to his home. We had parties at his house. Um, so he was like a, a father figure. Uh, I mean, one of the first things you did when returning from university was to find George Brizan to report. <laughs> so he'd be guiding you, finding out about your performance, um, pointing out uh, you know, future directions as it related to career. So it was indeed a very close relationship. And I think he had played a significant uh, role in the lives of thousands of students, given this extensive um, period of teaching, which is um, beyond 30 years. So it's very difficult to find a figure who have made such a tremendous impact, particularly on the lives of young people during the period 1970s to 1980s. So from that perspective, I think uh, Grenada would have lost uh, a towering patriot, someone who dedicated uh, most of his life to the growth and development of Grenada, who had a vision for the development of Grenada. And I think his legacy is one that will be well remembered. Uh, I mean, uh, you spoke about you know, being a mentor and that sort of thing. I mean, uh, your, your relationship would have changed with him, I'm guessing, over the years from a uh, young boy in school uh, and as an adult. Uh, what was it like knowing him personally and how did that relationship uh, well, you're quite right. right. Um, that relationship um, grew into a professional relationship. And uh, we spent a lot of time um, in the early 1984. You would recall, um, you might be too young, uh, with the collapse of the revolution in 1983. Uh, we had an interim administration. Uh, we were all searching for answers. We were all looking for new direction. The interim administration was supposed to be in office for one year, transitory. And certainly with the return of democracy, because during the revolution it was a one-party state. Uh, given the political vacuum that existed, uh, lots of discussions were taking place as to what's next. Um, who do we envisage as a potential uh, political leader that can take Grenada? from the point at where it's at to inspire people once more and pursue a path of growth and development. 
And so there were a number of side discussions and tables, and the name George Brazan kept coming up over and over again. I called him because we had frequent telephone contact, and he said, well, Moe's boy, as he used to call me, um, quite a few people have been approaching me on the, on the same issue. Um, my colleague Tony Boson and I, we worked together at the time. We were discussing and we came to the same conclusion. And then one day at my office, three individuals turned up, um, Tony Boson, Mark Isaac, and um, Jerome Joseph, to discuss politics and the, and the, the, the way forward. And um, that led to a, a call to George Brazan. And the rest is history. That was the formation of the National Democratic Party that spent a number of months together um, trying to build a party, going around the country building um, various constituencies. Um, that led, of course, to, I don't know if you're old enough or if you have read, that um, so under the influence of the US, there were two other parties at the time. We had the resuscitation of the Grenada National Party, GNP, and we had a group of individuals who came from out of Grenada um, forming what was known as the GDM. That's Dr. Keith Mitchell, Dr. Francis Alexis, etc. And under the influence uh, of the US, um, a relationship was forged and all those three parties was merged into one. And you had the NNP being formed. So you had the demise of the individual parties then. And so we had George Brazan and being assimilated into that group. Uh, we had the first election, which the NNP won. Um, subsequently to that, I went back to school in 1985, returned in 1987, just about the time when the NNP then was disintegrating, and received a call from George Brazan um, to meet him at his office, where we had discussions. And he advised me, well, this is what is transpiring. A number of them have taken a decision to, you know, and uh, he requested my assistance in, in being part of his policy committee for the NDC. And so we had a professional relationship. So we grew from teacher, mentor, student to professional colleagues. Um, and so the relationship was, was relatively close. Uh, I was honored um, when he requested of me to review some of the chapters of his major work, um, Grenada Island of Conflict. And so I regarded our relationship as um, extremely valuable. Um, like I indicated earlier, he's probably the person who have had the most influence as a teacher on many of us lives. You know. And so it's a tremendous loss. And the magnitude of his contribution um, will be talked about for quite a long time. If you travel abroad and you go to any of the metropolitan centers and where a group of friends are, hanging out together. It's, you know, automatically George Brazan's name comes up. You know, people remembering the, the valuable days, um, the time spent together, mentoring, teaching. Um, his legacy will live on uh, by virtue of his two major, what I consider his two major publications, and there are quite a few, which is Grenada's Black Gold, which is an analysis of the importance, strategic importance of the nutmeg industry. Of course, the history of Grenada, which is Grenada Island of Conflict. Then he had others. I think one was Fortitude and the Human Spirit, uh, which he published with his daughter. So George Brazan's legacy will be enduring. Um, there is no other one who have made such a meaningful contribution by virtue of the extensive nature of his research into socioeconomic issues in Grenada, as well as his extensive period of molding young lives. So it is a tremendous legacy. Um, would you say that it was uh, who he was as a teacher that stood out the most about him? Or, or what would you say stood out the most? I think his enthusiasm, his concern, um, his total dedication and commitment. Um, uh, for instance, during 1974, um, prior to independence, you would have read that um, Grenada was in turmoil, the country was shut down for months. We had to write our final exams in May, and there was schools were shut. Um, students were agitating, they were a very integral part of the process of, the, of demonstrations, etc. However, George found it fit 
that during that period, we all attended economics classes from 8 to 10 in the morning, and after that you could go demonstrate. So that commitment was there. So when everybody was home and running around doing things, we ensured that at least we, we were tutored. So I think his commitment, his concern, um, we spent a, a lot of spare time together. Um, his influence extended beyond the classroom. Um, his uh, treatise on, for instance, the West Indian cherry will forever be in my mind. He is one of the first persons who articulated that we needed to consume more of that particular um, a fruit because of its high vitamin C content, one of the highest, you know. I remember quite fondly his admonishment on relationships, you know. He had a theory that always stays with me. Uh, he says, well, if you're looking to acquire a relationship and, and to get married, um, I guess he was he, he formed that opinion after maybe his analysis of the, the challenges one can have. He used to say to us, um, in, in looking for a partner, first look within your village. And then you extend it to your, 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 your parish. And then you extend it to your country. And then you next look to the Caribbean before looking outside, you know. And I guess he was... He was uh, articulating a, a, a biblical admonition there, be not equally you culturally. The challenges that one can have if you enter in a relationship from somebody from a different culture. So I give it an example of, of some of the things he imparted. So it was a holistic relationship where he, it was not only limited and restricted only to the imparting of specific, you know, academic knowledge as it relates to the subject area. But he sought to really mentor his students and teaching them about life and the range of issues that one will have to contend with as you, you know, grow and face the challenges of the world. So from that perspective, you know, it's very difficult not to, you know, conclude that Mr. Brazan had such a, you know, impactful um, influence on the lives of young minds at the time who were eager for knowledge and, you know, looking excited about how can you change the world, how can you make Grenada a better place. Uh, you know, I think he was able to channel our enthusiasm, our energies in, in the right direction. In fact, he was the one when I left school, I wanted to be an, an economist. Um, so there was some significant influence um, relative to his peers. That is not, of course, discounting the role that most of our, our teachers would have played in our lives, but certainly George Bazan was an extremely important one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you've mentioned his legacy a number of times. Uh, what would you say his greatest legacy is? Well, it's certainly his greatest legacy would be the, the influencing and molding of young minds. Um, if you talk to him, um, he would be extremely proud of hundreds of his students who have gone on to be, you know, very important positions in life, university professors, um, outstanding in their particular profession. I think, based on our discussions, that would be his pride and joy. Um, the performance of his students. Yeah. So I think that, that to me is his most outstanding contribution to the growth and development of, of the world. Yeah. Because most of his students would have traveled and they're now contributing in various countries, various institutions around the world. Okay. So his legacy is beyond the borders of Grenada. And, uh, and what did he envision for Grenada? Uh, how did he think that we could get out of the tough times that Grenada is in now? I think self um, self-determination. I think he articulated a vision of Grenada that is more independent, greater utilization of our resources, um, the integration of the sectors of our economy. There are so many things he articulated that we needed to do uh, that lie within our grasp locally. So I, I think that was his vision of Grenada, where we'd be a self-sufficient um, enabled economy, utilizing our resources more 
to our benefit. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, Zamuz, I want to thank you very, very much for for sharing uh, your experience, uh, our experiences with, with Mr. Brazan. Uh, obviously, a, a very great loss to to yourself and and to the nation of of Grenada. So, uh, thank you very much. Certainly, for and I'd like to take this opportunity to express my condolences to his close family and to add, urge them to um, you know hang in there. You know. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, folks at home, um, if you have your condolences that, that you want to send in as well, uh, go onto our Facebook page uh, and you can leave your condolences there. We'll try and read some of them out. And uh, there you go. Once again, a, a great loss to, to Grenada. So thank you very, very much, Mr. Moses.